The presidency lists 35 projects and policies of the last one year since the second term cabinet was inaugurated. We analyze the activities and the agenda. And the governor of Benue says Samuel Autumn insists on gun licensing policy for responsible citizens in the country as he praises the 13 billion year mark for community policing in the country. Hello everyone and welcome to the program. This is Politics Today live on Channel Television. I'm Sean Kimalo in Lagos. Let's first tell you about the reaction and the response of the governor of Benue State, Samuel Autumn, who has commended the federal government for approving 13 billion naira as takeoff for community policing in the country. He says that the insecurity across the country remains a major problem that must be tackled without religious or political sentiments. Governor Autumn said that there is at a news conference in Abuja today where he also restated his calls on the federal government to upgrade the policy on gun licensing in a way that responsible citizens will be allowed to carry sophisticated weapons for self-defense. Before we get into the matter of tonight, we have some stories for you on our political roundup. It's one year since President Buhari inaugurated the second term cabinet. What have they done in the last one year? We have set that cabinet tonight on the program. But we'll take a look at some of these stories we have for you on our political roundup. The chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, has given assurance that the October governorship election in Undo State will be hitch free. Professor Yakubu stated this at the training workshop organized for some staff of the commission held in Akure, the state capital. I'm 100% confident that by uh, October 10th, you know, in fact, well before October 10th, uh, we would have concluded all the arrangements and all the outstanding small, small matters that we need to do. Some officials of the Advanced Nigeria Democratic Party, ANDP, in Bayelsa State, are claiming they have washed their hands off the ongoing case on the alleged unlawful exclusion of the party's candidate from the November the 16, 2019 governorship election. At a press conference in Yenigua, the state secretary of the party said the party was never a part of the petition filed before the tribunal. The party secretary said the ANDP had unanimously adopted the state governor during the run-up to the poll. For a greater and better Bayelsa state. In that consideration, we met and agreed to support the candidature of His Excellency Senator Doye Diri of the PDP. The People's Democratic Party in Gombe State says it has begun strengthening its structures in the 11 local government areas of the state as it aims to ensure unity among its members. The chairman of the party, Major General Amnon Kwaskebe retired, disclosed this while swearing in the caretaker committee for Biliri local government area of the state. A year after it lost the governorship election, the People's Democratic Party had begun moves to unite its members. With a new party executive, its focus is now to strengthen the structures in the local governments. Let's get straight to it, everyone. So today, one year ago, President Buhari inaugurated his second term cabinet over 60 days since he got a re-election as Nigeria's president. President Buhari at that event reminded the ministers that the core focus of the government was guaranteeing security, diversifying the economy, to be inclusive and tackling corruption. It asks the new cabinet to be focused on the goals and policy direction of the administration in achieving economic growth. The president said, for the 2019 to 2023 period, key performance indicators, KPIs, will be set to assess the ministers. The president, Buhari, then re-emphasized that the need for communication, coordination, and cooperation amongst for the three ministers that he appointed. But one year after... Have all that happened? Today, the presidency released a 35 item policy and performance track record. Let's get talking on this one. How far has the Buhari government, in its second term, one year after the cabinet was formed and inaugurated, how far have they served and uh, keep up to the yearnings of Nigerians? 
Mr. Femi Adeshina is our guest tonight on the program. He joins us from Abuja City. Many thanks, Mr. Adeshina, for joining us tonight. Uh, one thing that is very important is that um, some of the things that you listed today, perhaps some of them are policy statements, some of them are activities of government and the cabinet in the last one year. But the question is that what would this government say that it is a major achievement for it in all of these 35 lists that you've made? Well, um, thank you. Good evening, Shem. You, you are asking a question that has been asked and asked and asked and answered and answered and answered. And I guess it will, be con it will continue to be asked and we will continue to answer it. Part of the answer is that document you have referred to that we released today, chronicling policies and projects and achievements. That's part of the answer to your question. But what I would like to say is that this government has an umbrella of three key uh, policies and programs. Secure the country, revive the economy, and fight corruption. Those are the three umbrella. And under that umbrella, you have a lot of other, other targets and goals and uh, programs and policies. So the government is continuing with what is started since 2015 under those three major umbrellas. So the big question is that how far has that been uh, uh, performed? Uh, first and foremost, the president was very, very categorical on the issue of coordination and communication. For the critics of this government will, uh, are, are, are saying that that, in fact, is, the, uh, is a major problem of this cabinet. Uh, thank you. In a country of 200 million people, you always have critics. Even in a home of five, ten people, not all of them will agree on direction and uh, things to, to do and how to do it. Not even a, in a home do you have unanimity at all times. So in a country of 200 million people, you will have those who will criticize. You will have those who won't agree with certain things. But it does not change the fact that government is at work and it continues to do what it has set out to achieve for the country. So but did the president realize that there seems to be some a problem with coordination and communication because that is, is what he feared. He feared that there might be problem with communication and coordination and he re-emphasized it. But a few months down the line, that was a major problem. Has he realized that? Well, it is said that uh, the largest room in the world is the room for improvement. So the ministers have been at work for one year now there is one year is an opportunity for them to assess. And in whatever ways they feel they have fallen short, they can then improve. They can improve on co coordination. They can improve on communication. That's the opportunity that one year in four years gives you. If you are on a 400-mile journey and you get to 100 kilometers, it's a milestone. It's an opportunity for you to review the journey so far and to preview over the next 300 kilometers. So it's an opportunity for the ministers to then assess themselves vis-a-vis -vis what target the president set for them. So one of the other things is the KPIs. The president said that he's going to keep tabs on the assessment of each ministry and each ministers. What is the president doing? Has he done that? Has he been able to assess his ministers? What would come out of that assessment? Well, if you have followed the briefings from the weekly Federal Executive Council meeting, particularly from about November last year, you would have noticed that two ministers gave a performance report per Federal Executive Council meeting, starting with the returning ministers. They will come and give a report of what they had achieved. That was just concluded about two, three weeks ago. All the ministers have now given a performance report. And coming up in the first week in September is a, a two or three day retreat 
cabinet retreat in which all those things will be looked at again. And of course, the president will have opportunity to then make comments about the performance of each minister based on the report the minister himself has given. That, that weekly report was like a peer review process because they came and gave their stewardship and other ministers could then ask questions, could comment, and the president would then make final comments. So that had been happening in like almost eight to 10 months. But Mr. Adesina, you are a member of that cabinet. Are you proud of what you have done as a team in the last one year? I mean, in the face of the fact that I you are doing this for Nigerians. I am proud of this government. I am proud that I'm a member, um, a partaker in it. I am an insider in this government. Of course, if I was not proud of it, what would I be doing there? I am quite proud of this government. I believe that it's serving the country. It's serving genuinely. It's serving to the best of its ability. For those, who, for those who believe that there is a case of a worsening situation of security in the country, which is one of the major agenda of uh, the government, uh, the Buhari government, when it was reconstituting uh, a cabinet for the second term, what would you say uh, you'll be telling Nigerians on behalf of President Buhari when you say you are proud of the government and some of the people have said they are sad about the security situation in the country? Yes, um, there are security challenges in the country. And of course, when you have loss of lives, you've got to be sad about it. You can't rejoice when you have wanton loss of lives and destruction of property. There are security challenges. But um, it has been proven many times that it's relative to say it's worsening. No, we are not where we are yet. But I, re I, I recall your program on Sunday about two, three weeks ago. There was this group captain, uh, Sadiq Garbashe, who came with statistics and reeled out what has been happening in this country since 2011 to now. If you look at it, you hosted that program, so you are privy to what he said. You can't quite agree that it is terribly worse than it was at a certain point. But, but is that what, no, no, uh, yeah. Mark, what I have said, we are not where we want to be. Okay, so uh, let, let's wrap up this segment with you now, Mr. Additional. Uh, it's one year. But the, the, the thing is that you did not elect yourself. The president neither did not elect himself into office. So you're serving the Nigerian people. But if the Nigerian people are not happy about a major agenda of government, would that give you some kind of... Uh, 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 fulfillment. No, no, baby, because in a democracy, you are responsible to the people. But the people who understand, quite understand, and they show that understanding. You have people who are playing politics with developments, playing politics with security, playing politics with loss of lives and all that. But those who understand what is happening in the country, show that understanding, and they know that government is at work on these things, and it's a work that will be accomplished. Those who are playing politics is a different kettle of fish. Mr. Femi Adishina, I must sincerely thank you for coming tonight, the spokesperson of President Muhammad Obawari, and I wish the cabinet uh, very well in the coming uh, years uh, that is remaining in office. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Thank you. We'll take a break, everyone, and when we come back, will we hear a different view to what Mr. Adeshina has said on the program today about the performance of the Buhari second term cabinet and we'll talk more. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, everyone. Let's get back to the conversation and assessment of the Buhari second term cabinet and what they have done. The presidency released a 35 item policy and performance uh, track record. Let's get to talk to someone who is uh, an experienced member. Oh, so you can see some of these uh, achievements that uh, you can see there on your screen. Mr. Femi Additional uh, spoke with us earlier on the program. Let's get an experienced member of cabinet, a former minister who is a member of um, the opposition PDP, an advisor to the PDP 
Navy National Chairman on External Engagement, uh, Mr. Osita Chidoka, he joins us from Abuja City. Thank you indeed, Mr. Chidoka, for joining us tonight on the program. First and foremost, the agenda of this government to keep up an assessment of its cabinet or its ministers. How do you find that, considering that they listed 35 items of achievements or performance or policy uh, track record over the last one year, your assessment? Well, uh, thank you very much, Sharon, and good evening to everybody. Um, first of all is that I was surprised that the government released a list of um, 35 achievements uh, this year because um, a year ago or two years ago, they released 64 achievements. So even by their quantum of achievements, uh, the government has declined in productivity. Um, in 2018, it was 64, and in 2020, they've reduced to 35. So we can see there is decline in the quantity of achievements. But when you look at the quality of the achievements, um, what I think Nigerians should be asking themselves five years after this government is, how are you doing today? Um, the GDP of the country has fallen from 550 billion in 2015 to 350 billion. So let me explain what it means, uh, something that most people miss. If you had a property or if you had salary that was worth um, 1 million naira in 2015, and at, as at that time, at 160 to 200 naira, even if you take 200 naira, you had $5,000. At 470 naira today, you have less than $2,000. So everybody is poorer today in Nigeria in real terms. Now, but the most important ingredient of this government is let's take them on, on, on economy. On the economy, Nigeria's debt has risen to about 36 trillion. It was about... Uh, he has grown three times what he was in 2015. Um, and this 36 trillion, some say 28 trillion, depending on which numbers you are working on, um, if you are multiplying by 360 or 470, but it's about 36 trillion. And he has grown from about 12 trillion to 36 trillion, meaning that 90% of our revenue is currently going into debt servicing. So I don't know how that can be marked as an achievement. Um, when you look at what is the cost of this debt profile, it is not that we have borrowed money to enhance, to invest, to yield us money. We've borrowed money practically to do three things I can see because I don't have uh, visibility into what the government does. But the three things I can see is, number one, they've used the borrowed money to sustain the Naira at an unsustainable rate. From 500 Naira that he went up during the 2016 um, fiasco, they brought it down to 360, and then changed it for government officials and their friends at 305, so meaning that the subsidy on the Naira has been financed by some of this borrowing. We've also used this subsidy, the, these borrowings to finance fuel subsidy. The government removed fuel prices. They refused there was no subsidy in fuel prices in 2011, 2012. All of them argued there was no subsidy in fuel, but now fuel subsidy has remained one of the big ticket items that has consumed money. The last one is the power sector su subsidy. Um, all the discussion about power is that the key things to be done in the power sector hasn't been done. So the power sector is consuming huge amounts of foreign exchange uh, that the government cannot sustain. Therefore, every Nigerian has paid a price for this policy incoherence. Um, strange policy incoherence that is leading to 35 achievements, of which number one on the agenda is the increase in number of ministries. For a country that is currently at 90% of its revenue to, um, to service its debt, um, building new ministries, bringing in new people into work is suddenly not something you should have as achievement. Um, secondly, we shall look at the issue of security. I don't need to elaborate on security because every Nigerian knows that today Nigerians are far more insecure than they have been before the advent of this administration. The critical problem with the security is that nothing in what the government has done has gone to looking at a fundamental look at our security architecture and about how to create about um, a security system that will secure Nigerians. Because fundamentally, this administration, like no other administration, has damaged our national integration program. Nigeria has been a country, the only multi-ethnic country in Africa with major ethnic tribes in it, which has thrived on an inclusive policy, which has thrived on a federal character principle that has brought people from all parts of Nigeria together. This government has damaged that and has strengthened Nigeria down to its shortfalls. So I'm really surprised at the 35 achievements. Right. But looking so, at them, me, you can see me, that they are may, very routine matters. 
Yeah, if I may, Mr. Additional said something about the fact that there, they, they, uh, that there is nobody that will doubt the fact that this government is at work. Can you doubt the effort of this government that it is working? I doubt the effort because um, <laughs> it's clear to Nigerians that what we're suffering is not poor governance, but no governance. Um, I, I, you can see from Nigerians that nobody is superintending the government. Nobody is superintending the ministers. Nobody is holding anybody accountable for the mishaps we are seeing going on in the country. Nobody is showing us the targets that has been set for the different MDAs and the ministries. So we cannot for certain say that there is a measurement metrics that is working. So it is obvious to all said that when you pay contractors, you know, when you have large contracting projects going on by Chinese companies and foreign companies, half of that money goes out of the country. Everybody that is a local contractor in Nigeria can tell you that they have not gotten contracts from the federal government, and if they have gotten, there are no payments. So there has been very little capital expenditure in what will impact on Nigerians here. Um, if you are a Nigerian salary earner, as I said before, you will see that the salaries you've earned, which used to be about $120 a month, or our minimum wage, has fallen down to less than about um, $40 or $30 a month at where we are today at $30,000. So it is clear that there is no careful thinking. There is no coherent philosophy of governance. There is no careful metrics of management and monitoring systems and procedures. But, but, if you look uh, around, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Chibaka, let me, if I may quickly... For employment uh, and across all the agencies. Uh, all right. So in, in wrapping up the conversation, you are a member of cabinet. And uh, what this government said it did, the president at some point said they were going to set KPIs for each ministry and each minister. Mr. Additional told us that each minister has been presenting... Uh, their, their achievement or their work in the last one year. Did that happen when you were in office? We, 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 we under the PDPAs, they, we, ministers actually received letters from the president, starting from President Obasanjo, stating clearly what he's expecting of you to do in office and what are the key plans he has for that particular ministry. He wrote it down. He didn't ask you to set up your own KPIs. And most of the work of the government was made public. During our days in cabinet, we had presentation every month from every sector. Then we had the Saturday meetings where people, stakeholders in that sector were brought together and the minister would defend what they have done in that sector. And people in that sector would give their feedback to the president to whether this thing is working or not. There has been no sectoral stakeholder meetings since this government came to power. So there couldn't have been any monitoring of the government. Like I said, the declining effect of the governance shows itself in even its own achievements, which has fallen from 64 to 35 in two years. And it is clear also that the key indication of this government, the key indices of this government, the issue of security, the issue of anti-corruption, have all hit um, low watermark. Where today we are fighting a situation where the desire of the corruption um, agency is himself now being probed for corruption. So it is clear to all Nigerians that it has been all platitudes and no right. action. All so right. what I will suggest going forward is that the government should publicly indicate what is the philosophy and the, what is the framework of this government so that Nigerians can measure it in a more empirical manner. Mr. Osita Chidoka, former Minister of Aviation, thank you indeed, and the advisor to PDP National Chairman on External Engagement. I must sincerely thank you for coming tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Chair. But that's our show for today, and it's Friday, so I wish you a very pleasant weekend. Bye for now, everyone.